मैं तो दिल्ली यार दिल्ली में रहता हूँ और रेडियो फीजी बहुत रेडियो फीजी रोज सुनता हूँ रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन Good evening, Fiji. In this bulletin, new app will not infringe on user privacy. Parents urge to ensure education continues. And a moral landfill space becoming a concern. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. The coronavirus contact tracing app Care Fiji has no threat and does not pose an infringement to the privacy of users. The assurance has been made by the Director General for Digital Fiji, saying the app is for the sole purpose of protecting Fijians from any future threat of the pandemic. Apenisa Wangarindovu reports the app does not trace location, neither does it allow digital transfer of information when users are in close proximity. The Care Fiji app accesses a modern enhancement to traditional methods for tracking the spread of the virus and that alone. If I have my phone, I've downloaded the app. I have my Bluetooth turned on. Uh, Acting Permanent Secretary Health also has his turned on. There is a digital handshake that occurs uh, depending on how close you are to um, the person who has installed the app and have their Bluetooth turned on. So the actual my details do not Get trans, do not get transferred. Maravilala says user's phone contact is requested upon installing the app to make it convenient to contact them in the event they are exposed to the virus. So in terms of personal information, the only personal information that is required is your mobile number. Now the reason why that's required is so that you can activate your account on the Care Fiji app and also in the event that uh, you have cross paths with a COVID-19 patient, uh, you, they will be able to, the Minister of Health and Medical Services contact tracing team will be able to contact you at the earliest. Maravilal also says if other information is required, it will be upon users to give consent. In order to protect, you know, your safety and your loved ones and those around you, the recommendation is to have it. No one has access to it un until and unless you consent to sending it across to the Ministry of Health and Medical Services. I believe the app is going to help a lot in fighting COVID-19. It's a good thing that uh, we'll be able to con um, contact people who are COVID-19 patients. I really don't know how to operate a phone, but I have my children who can help me install the app. The government is urging Fijians to read the privacy policy once they register. The Care Fiji app is now available on Play Store. Apinisa Wangarindobu, FBC News. With schools opening next week, the Education Ministry says all schools will forego curricular and competitive sporting activities. Minister Rosie Akbar says this is to ensure that the backlog in lessons is covered. Pranita Prakash reports. This school curriculum has been realigned to ensure that all schools are on the same page. Term 1 and Term 2 is mostly um, focused on a lot of activities that are extracurricular, sporting activities. So we will be foregoing all the extracurricular activities and sporting activities, competitive sports. Obviously children will be exposed to normal sporting activities, but we will be utilizing the time for competitive sports to ensure that we, uh, the, the coverage of work is completed. The education minister says school term holidays have also been reduced to make up for the time lost. We've taken out the holidays. Now we'll be only, term two will have one week school holidays. So all those time would be utilized. But again, if I could emphasize to our heads of school teachers, we will not pressure our children for Saturday classes and extra classes. Eight to four is ample time for us to complete the required coverage and prepare our year 12 and 13 for exams. The, uh, the rest of the uh, classes will undergo school-based assessments. The classes for year 12 and 13 will resume from next Tuesday, while the rest of the primary and secondary schools and early childhood centers will open a week later. Pranita Prakash. FBC News. Parents have been urged to ensure their children return to school when classes resume next week. Following three months of closure, classes for years 12 and 13 will resume next Tuesday, while the rest of the primary and secondary schools and early childhood centres will open on July 6th. There are more than 275,000 students and 13,000 teachers in over 1,700 schools across the country. Education Minister Rosie Akbar says they realize the urgent need to return to education to a state of normalcy. We've kept all our students engaged 
through a number of activities, if I can mention some. We, we kept our schools open, we had our worksheets, we had our website that continued to provide those who could access learning materials. We had the, the, the new education channel through Wallace. So that was done to ensure that our children remain engaged. And I'd like to appeal to all the parents that they must ensure that the children return to school. The Environment Minister digging new pits to accommodate waste at the Nambora landfill as it is filling up. Permanent Secretary Joshua Wycliffe says the site doesn't have the capacity to accommodate increasing amount of garbage collected and they're working on converting some of the waste into renewable energy. Kelly Vavala reports. Tons of waste are collected daily from all divisions and dumped at this site. We're running out of space and of course it costs money every time we dig. So we've been discussing within the ministry to look at a technology that, will, that would not require just stacking up but uh, incinerate and make energy out of the, the waste that we have. So it's, it's a lot of waste there, so by remediating the waste, you shrink the size of the landfill, not grow it. And then uh, by incinerating it, you convert the waste into energy. Whitecliffe adds they're in the process of deciding on a tender for remedial work at the landfill. At the moment, there's a tender that's closed. The ministry is looking at um, what options have been offered, and the best option for Fiji will be chosen and rolled out. Special Administrator Chair Sikeli Tikunduandua says urban drift is a major contributor to the increasing amount of waste collected by municipalities. Start, uh, you know, separating uh, uh, recycle items and also the the green waste from uh, the rubbish so that this could be used for compost and that will in the long term reduce the number of uh, uh, or the volume of uh, uh, solid waste that get uh, transferred to the number of landfill. The ministry says it can no longer afford to spend millions stacking the garbage at the number of landfill. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Up ahead, PRB residents warned about criminal activities and children treasure moments at the beach. Hola, nadang gua prosa nang garse, go erkraki. Do televe ono baro na Radio Fiji 1, nando mi viti. Radio Fiji 1, nando mi viti. Criminal activities cannot be allowed in public rental board flats. Minister for Housing Pramila Kumar says they are aware of instances where the PRB flats have been used for illegal activities such as drug dealing. Pranita Prakash has more. Illegal activities in PRB flats have been a major concern for several years. We also know that this is a place where there are a lot of issues in relation to drugs, drinks, and other crime-related matters. We have had issues also in Suva, uh, in mid-road flats, where people were involved in drug dealing. And we don't want such tenants in these premises. The Housing Minister says they want to create a safe environment. Now to deal with this issue, we all have to work together because the last thing we want is to make some of these flats into a crime hub. That is not our intention. Our intention is to provide you with safe home, safe place to live. But unfortunately, there are tenants who don't think that way. Kumar says they are working on their policies and have also evicted tenants involved in criminal acts. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Cane farmers around Nandi have been gearing up for the crushing season, which starts today. A number of farmers could be seen in the cane fields from this morning, organizing trucks that will transport their harvest. Philippe Naikaso has more. This was the scene for many farms around Nandi today as cane farmers hope for a successful crossing season. I totally was prepared for the last three, four weeks because uh, we got the contractor here, same contractor cut my cane last year and again this year. Then. For Balram, who has been in the sugar industry for most of his life, this year he will be looking to contribute immensely as the economy is suffering from the effects 
of COVID-19. My experience at the moment, the way they started, is a very good. Season and everything is now good. Because no rain, nothing, machine going well. Might be like this, in one more week I can just uh, finish my thousand ton. With people from India, the only ones operating the mechanical harvesters, this has not stopped a local company from learning the ropes as travel restrictions are still in place. The locals are good because we're saving a lot. Because when we get the operators from overseas, from India, we have to pay their accommodation, heavy salary and all those things. The Lotoka mill will start crushing on Wednesday, while the Rarawai mill will commence crushing from tomorrow. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. Live and Learn Fiji has noted a 75% decrease in their community visitation program over the past three months. Country manager Doris Susau says this is due to the coronavirus pandemic and the need to conform to the restrictions imposed by the government. Chasai Nanunga reports. It will bring back lost jobs. Following the announcement made by the Prime Minister yesterday, Live and Learn Fiji promptly taken its cue in making up for time lost with community members. We have tried to maintain some form of contact to ensure and reassure our communities that our programs uh, will continue as soon as restrictions are eased. And we're thankful that uh, the government of the day has actually provided um, um, that for us. And so now we are able to go out um, into communities as of this week, I think it is, um, and engage in training um, what, we, what is our core function. Eh? had to put a stop to all of our community engagement activities and I guess you know in a way we're grateful with the recent change uh, in restrictions lifting easing of restrictions we're able to begin again. So Sao says they've also received an ever-increasing demand for humanitarian work and assisting the health ministry with COVID-19 awareness at community level. Uh, we've been fortunate to have uh, received uh, more funding um, to support communities through COVID response um, and also more recently with uh, the impacts of uh, TC Hadwood. So when we look at uh, operations and maintaining staff, uh, we're one of uh, the organizations that uh, are now recruiting. So, um, you know, um, that, that's where I would see uh, we've had um, opportunities rather than challenges. Eh? The organization plans to recruit 20 volunteers and 10 full-time staff in the next few weeks to serve for a period of 18 months. Chosei Yeranunga, FBC News. The Suva High Court this morning confronted the defense in the case of a man charged with murder in the death of his wife, stating that the accused cannot pretend he is not aware of the charge. It is alleged that Chosevata Koroi stabbed his 28-year-old wife to death in Nangara Naitasiri on May 1st following a heated argument. Koroi pleaded not guilty of the charge of murder, which the judge said was a requirement before he could consider the defense request to reduce the charge to manslaughter. A request for bail was denied to allow the investigating officer to first check on the welfare of the Koroi's children and will be reconsidered in a week's time. The pre-trial date has been set for the 17th of next month. It was a dream come true for the children of Treasure House Christian Children's Home in Nandi when they stayed at Bamboo Travelers for almost a month. The youngsters were accommodated at Bamboo as their home in Salnaka was undergoing renovations. Philippe Nakaso has the story. The main highlight for these kids during their stay at Bamboo Travelers was being able to go to the beach at any time. We were really blessed with Mr. Richard for giving us a space and also, they were able to accommodate and facilitate these COVID-19 restrictions and uh, the protection of the children. So he was kind enough to give us a whole half of the resort on the other side where, you know, there's no interference from anyone. Police uh, patrols are happening every night. Before the kids were housed at Bamboo, necessary checks were conducted by the home to ensure the kids' safety and well-being. Kids are also extremely blessed for the opportunity to be by a beachside and you know having devotions every morning without any hiccups from anyone. And they've just been we've just been so blessed to be here. The kids left a mark on the bamboo staff and a few guests who were around at that time. We help with the coordinators 
to coordinate the activities, we make bonfire, we try to treat them special. Well, they, and I do believe that uh, they really enjoy their stuff here and it will be very hard for them to move from here back to their home. Eh? The renovation at the Treasure Home is being funded by Denara Corporation Limited and once completed, the home will also be disability friendly. Philippe and Icaso, FBC News. And Whitney joins us now with the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up in business tonight. Movie shooting business tops government agenda. And in growing Fiji, another food service hits the market. Stay with us. My name is Neha and I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. As we return to a new normal, there is hope for Fiji's vital film industry and television industry. When announcing the revised COVID-19 restrictions, Prime Minister Vorenge Benimarama said Fiji will be taking similar steps as New Zealand, who has moved to safely resume production of the sequel to Avatar. But the Prime Minister stressed that this will be done in a completely safe and controlled manner. Cast and crew won't be allowed to board their plane without proof of a negative COVID-19 test and will be screened for symptoms both before boarding and upon landing. They'll then be entered into government-designated quarantine, whether that's a pre-approved hotel or a remote isolated island for the mandatory 14-day period. All quarantine and testing costs will be borne by the production company. In recent years, Fiji has established as Hollywood of the Pacific, with the industry bringing hundreds of millions of dollars in the economic activity and invaluable exposure to the world. When COVID-19 uh, forced the industry to shut, it wasn't just a blow to the millions of viewers around the world who await these hit shows in anxious uh, anticipation. It was a blow to the hundreds of Fijians who work as crew on set and the communities that production companies have forged loving relationship with over the years. Business is changing all over the world and this is no different in France. Paris is seeing a surge in the demand for electric bikes as many favor two-wheel transport over the metro. We now join Sinifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. Trading on the South Pacific Stock Exchange was active last week with a volume of approximately 56,000 shares and an estimated value of $120,000. Nine listed stocks recorded price changes. Those registering gains were Fiji Care Insurance, Contiki Finance, Paradise Beverages, Port Tenera Marina and the Rice Company of Fiji. Meanwhile, Fiji Television, RB Patel Group, Vision Investments and Fijian Holding shares recorded lower prices. Due to the various share price changes, the total market value fell by 0.63% and concluded the week with a value of $3.55 billion. That's a wrap from our local stock market and from HFC Bank, Vinaka. Turning to today's exchange rates as set this morning, the Fiji dollar soared again against the currencies of our two major trading partners, Australia and New Zealand, but slipped against the other currencies we cover as the US dollar showed an upswing. The value of the Fiji dollar is determined by a formulated basket of currencies, greatly influenced by the US dollar. Looking at commodities, crude oil has been on the rise, closing at nearly $40 a barrel. Gold was on the rise at $1,750 per ounce, and silver closed up at $1,787. Announce. Gone are the days of waiting in long food lines for orders as an online app now allows one to order food from their home or office with the press of a button. Shazcom Technology today launched its Fiji Eats online food delivery platform that is available at Play Store and App Store. Shazcom Managing Director Shanil Chandra says, since the COVID-19 lockdown and implementation of social distancing, a number of small and medium food vendors in Suva pivoted to focus more on pickup and delivery. He adds that Fiji Eats aims to help the sales of local food businesses as well as provide an extra income opportunity for local drivers and cyclists. So it's a whole complex thing. The app is one part, then the driver is one part, the restaurant preparing the food is one part. So it's all technology incorporated, uh, collaborated, working together. It's very interesting and we hope uh, we are able to satisfy uh, Fijians and you know, give them the comfort.
That's it from Business Tonight. We now join Jamie with the latest in sports. Thank you, Whitney, and good evening in sports tonight. More seven students encouraged. And four games in a week from Bar. This and more coming up. Mula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka, and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. The Fiji Rugby Union is encouraging relevant stakeholders to organize more sevens tournaments now that restrictions have eased. Fiji Rugby Union Chief Executive John O'Connor says one of their major concerns is the lack of game time for sevens players. He adds that since the green light has been given, they hope more sevens tournaments are staged. Another great thing about 50% of the crowd. Uh, some of the sevens tournaments like the Maris uh, that are planning to have their tournaments this year. Uh, we'll, uh, you know, they can uh, organize, which will then help our Shannon's boys prepare since there's no borders are still closed for the time being. The Fiji Sports Council will open its gyms, courts, pools and stadiums tomorrow. The biggest operator of sports facilities in the country will open with new measures in line with the government's requirements amid COVID-19. Akula Dama has the details. Fiji Sports Council patrons have started coming in today for bookings, but they will have to adapt to the new norm. We've now put uh, washing facilities, hand basins outside of the facilities, and where we can't put those, we will be having sanitizer for a start. Uh, we'll be taking thermal temperatures. Sports Council staff will play a major role in this new journey because it will save lives. Officials will be responsible for symptom screenings, and should not allow anyone who is sick to play. Getting used to the new requirements will take some time for Sports Council customers, but not for their staff. We had the opportunity to open uh, three facilities uh, uh, last month, so I think that uh, gave us time to practice that, and, uh, and we'll just roll it out to the new facilities that will open now. Whether you are an athlete or spectator, you will go through the same screening process. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. The Mbar football side will have to play four matches in their first week back in the Vodafone Premier League that's set to resume next month. Mbar is scheduled to play Navo on July 11th, Suva on the 12th, Lautoko on the 15th, then Asinu on the 18th. Unlike other districts, Mbar has played only one VPL match this season due to the OFC League commitments. Caroline Tavi has more. Bar FC manager Arvin Singh is concerned about the updated fixtures for the men in black. Singh says they will need ample time to prepare given they've been away from training for some time. We want more time for preparing for this uh, National League because, uh, we, we, because we're going to play back to back uh, two or three games. So that's we, we have to be uh, very well prepared for before we taking the field. Fiji FA Chief Executive Mohammed Yusuf says teams will be given three full weeks to get match ready as per the directive from the national coach. We care about the welfare of the players. We want them to train properly. So today we have sent messages. They need to start training from tomorrow and it will give them three full weeks to be match ready. Bai is ranked seventh with three points in the VPL standings. Carlini Tavi, FPC Sports. Fiji National Men's Sevens Captain Melin Derenalangi and amateur boxer Winston Hill will be part of the inaugural Olympic Day virtual race on the Olympic Channel tomorrow. Olympic Day schedule for Ju June 23rd has always been a significant date for the international Olympic movement with the aim of promoting mass participation of sports. This year it's taken a different turn in light of the current pandemic with the Olympic Day virtual race. Have the opportunity to that the International Olympic Committee um, have a have taken the initiative to host a a virtual I guess you can say an, a virtual Olympic Day or Olympic Day run, uh, which will involve 24 hours of um, physical activity done by athletes representing all the the 206 nations. 
Young Fiji Mbati rep Brandon Wakeham was sent off in the Bulldogs' 18-20 to loss to the Cronulla Sharks last night. Wakeham had a try assist but was put on report later for a foul on Sharks star Josh Dugan. English Premier League leaders Liverpool have slipped up in their first game back with a goalless draw against Everton. Though the blip does little to dent their title ambitions as they still hold a 23-point lead over their nearest rivals Manchester City. Elsewhere, Chelsea survived a scare in the competition restart. Real Madrid went to the top of the La Liga thanks to a hard-fought 2-1 victory at Real Sociedad. Zinedine Zidane's side are level on points with Barca, who drew nil all with Sevilla on Friday, but go top because of their superior head-to-head -head record. Sevu Reis was amongst the try scorers as the Crusaders began their Super Rugby out there raw campaign with a win of the Hurricanes. The All Blacks wing in the process also becoming only the third player ever in New Zealand to reach the 20 tries mark after just 21 games. Now to play of the day and we cannot start our week without revisiting the devastation caused by Fiji and Maika Sibo over the weekend. Sivo Zeals may have lost to the Roosters, but his run over James Tedesco is still being talked about. That's it from Sports Tonight. Coming up in Weird and the Wonderful, check out the peculiar pink Lithuanian soup dish. This and more after the break. Hola, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. And in weather for the next 24 hours, expect cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Mainly fine weather elsewhere, cool at night. And a quick look at the weather map, looking at the west, mostly cloudy. Eastwards from Pacific Harbor to Suva, it's cloudy most of the time, with some showers. And up north, similar cloudy conditions prevailed. At sea, moderate to fresh south to southeasterly winds, moderate to rough seas. And turning to the tides, low tide at 1.31 tomorrow morning with high tide at 7.41 a.m. Sunrise is at 6.37. Now for tomorrow, it's mainly fine weather conditions expected. The nights will remain cool. Tomorrow's temperatures, it will remain in the high 20s. And looking further on to Wednesday, cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Mainly fine weather elsewhere, cool at night. And in Fijian Pulse tonight, we ask, are you satisfied with the relaxation and the COVID-19 restrictions? I welcome the government that she's doing something good, that kids are able to go to school again. A very uh, good announcement for the entire uh, Fiji Island group. Eh? That's good. At 11 o'clock they make it, the cafe, eh? because, because we want to sell our vegetables like that, it's coast night, eh? we can't sell it. Eh? Great announcement by PM. Recapping the main stories for tonight, a new app will not infringe on user privacy. Parents urge to ensure education continues and a borough landfill space becoming a concern. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question last week we had asked, is Hoskins Sotutu proving to be the best candidate for the All Blacks number A position? 70% said yes. And this week we're asking, are you in support of the new and relaxed COVID-19 restrictions that have been announced? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our first shot of the day for this week, Aquila Roden captured this in Mokani Mbao in Tailebu. And you can send us newsworthy pictures to email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj via Facebook page FBC News and our Twitter page at FBC underscore news. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow, from the team and I, stay safe, stay warm. Bye for now. Hola, 
I'm Miri, I'm from Lotoka, and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.